The NDP is calling today for federal aid for prairie farmers hit by this season's floods. A study from the Bank of Montreal says the heavy rain may cost directed. the farm economy $3 billion. Jack Layton is speaking the right now. Of the, of the economy for the future. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, it's facing this uh, arbitrary deadline of March uh, 2011. And uh, very clearly, there's going to have to be some flexibility introduced into the, uh, into the program. Uh, just to give the most obvious example of this, and the most pressing one perhaps, uh, in Saskatchewan, the flooding there has made it virtually impossible for some of the projects, uh, as many as 30 of the projects, I'm informed by the uh, urban municipalities, to be completed on time. Uh, you can't do sewer and, uh, and, and water uh, projects when there's flooding going on and when roads are closed. You can't be working on uh, road projects. Uh, there was two inches of rain, uh, I'm told, uh, just a, a, a couple of days ago that fell within a couple of hours in Regina. Uh, that puts a stop to, uh, to the progress on projects and the construction season comes to an end uh, in, in a few months. So clearly there's going to have to be some flexibility here and we're calling for an exemption uh, for the municipalities affected by this uh, flooding and weather uh, in Saskatchewan. And we would like the government as well to look at flexibility in other similar circumstances across the country so that the projects can actually be completed. Otherwise, the municipalities are going to be faced. They can't stop the project. They have to finish it. They're going to be faced with picking up uh, the extra bills. Many of them are already at their borrowing limits and therefore would have to turn around and raise taxes. And that would be the fault of the federal government. Um, I'd like also to speak uh, briefly about the census. Uh, the uh, Prime Minister is simply refusing to show leadership here, uh, or, or perhaps uh, what might be more correct to say is that uh, he, he's driving uh, this particular bus because he, he had a chance to shuffle uh, Mr. Clement uh, uh, out of the cabinet uh, or to another portfolio, given that what he told Canadians turns out not to have been true uh, in light of the most recent documents. Uh, and, uh, and instead, he's been playing games with the issue. He says, um, the Prime Minister says, some people want to put folks in jail because of the sentence, uh, the, uh, the census issue. Uh, well, I'd like somebody who believes that to actually stand up. It's a, it's a complete straw man. Uh, nobody believes that. Uh, and instead of playing games, he should be looking for a solution. Uh, I, today, am going to be in touch with Mr. Dusep and Mr. Ignatieff to see if the three opposition parties can't fashion uh, an approach for when the House returns on this issue. Uh, I am uh, uh, proposing that we uh, seek an emergency debate on the matter and that we look for ways to bring legislation uh, or motions before the House to get this sorted out. Uh, we really ought to be working together to eliminate the jail penalties, eliminate the straw man, as it were, and uh, find a way to make sure that the continuity of the information and the reliability and validity of the information in our census is preserved. It's incredibly important for the governance of this country, uh, not just at the federal level, but right the way through. And it's important for businesses uh, and individuals. Now, uh, I also want to comment uh, briefly on uh, the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, Mr. McKay, I have to assume speaking on the part of the government, seems to be trying to open the door to enticing the Liberal Party to join with the Conservatives in extending our military engagement in Afghanistan. Uh, they're wrapping it up in other kinds of packaging, like uh, a training, combat training and police training and so on and so forth. Uh, I think we have to be crystal clear here that Parliament and Canadians both uh, want our military engagement in Afghanistan to end. We do not believe that this is a route that's going to take us towards a solution. What we need is to use Canadians' talents for peacemaking uh, and, uh, and United Nations institutions uh, to be supported in that effort uh, rather than a continuation of the military uh, undertaking. Concernant le programme d'infrastructure. As to infrastructure. As we said, have been saying for a month, the parliamentary budget officer confirmed what we have been saying all along, i.e., the program has been uneven, suspect, and completely without vision from the start. The 
cutoff date is March 2011, but several municipal governments, uh, those in Saskatchewan among them, where there have been floods, will be uh, unable, totally unable, to see the projects to their end by that date. It is then important to have some flexibility so that these municipal governments can see the, pro the projects to their end without raising taxes. Consequently, we ask Mr. Harper to show some flexibility in the matter. Given the weather trouble crisis, given the floods and the rains in Saskatchewan. Census now. Again, this is an example of Mr. Harper's determination not to work with other parties to come to a solution. The crisis has been created by Mr. Harper himself. He has failed to show the leadership that Canadians expect from him. He could have. He could have taken Mr. Clements away from his cabinet when he shuffled the cabinet, but uh, did not do so. I will be talking with Mr. Duceppe and... NDP leader Jack Layton calling on the government to send more money to help farmers in the prairies who have really been whacked by heavy rains this year. He also wants the government to be more clear about Afghanistan and that our Canadian military mission in that country will come to an end next year.